is a developing integrated disinfection system which is, includes a trial ready mobile germicidal light device and the disinfection detection sensor called Movie Light and Movie Sense. Contactile is giving robots a human sense of touch through their painted soft tactile sensor array. This technology is as sensitive as human skin and can measure localized 3D deflection, force, vibration, and more. Bandicoot is a Sydney-based startup which has developed a raw new, a new technology for the online fashion industry, Shimmerview, that can increase conversion rates and decrease returns by giving online shoppers a better sense of the fabric of garment they are purchasing online. Block42 specializes in education technology, providing a platform to allow 10 to 16 year olds to work in team, practice design thinking, and learn to solve real world problems through an intuitive cloud-based 3D engine, focused on empowering teachers in STEM education. Also, joining us for the event is keynote speaker, David Burt, who's a director of entrepreneurship at the University of New South Wales. Now, we've set up this event so it's really simple for you to engage with the companies that are participating. The five companies that are presenting are all actually featured on the CRISP platform. We've set up a stream page for that so you can do three things. One, you can access their information. Two, you can do Q&A with the actual CEOs. And then three, you can register interest for going forward. Now, said the, the session is interactive. So the, the CEOs, you do have the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentations. We encourage you to register interest so you can find more about them as well. Now what's really important about this is we love working with the university. We're very proud of this association. We're proud of this opportunity. We have seen some of the more incredible companies like 4DX, for example, come out of universities, come out of that ex exciting sort of infrastructure, the uh, framework and the infrastructure that they've built up for that innovation to then go on to be great commercialization success stories. So thank you for joining today. I hope you enjoy the presentations and look forward to joining you at the end of the session. It's my pleasure to welcome our keynote speaker today, David Burt. David is the Director of Entrepreneurship at UNSW. He will shed light on the excellence of the UNSW Founders Program. Hello and welcome. I'm David Burt, the Director of Entrepreneurship at the University of New South Wales. It's fantastic to partner with Wholesale Investor to create this space that gives you a sneak peek into some of the most exciting new companies emerging from UNSW. You might be surprised to see a university supporting a pitch showcase, but we are here because UNSW and our philanthropic partners are making a huge investment into supporting the next generation of entrepreneurs from the UNSW community. What you might not know is that a university is an excellent place to support the formation of new companies. And that's because the population of a university is an awesome mix of people from those just starting out in life who have an abundance of energy and optimism all the way through to those coming towards the end of their career who have a deep knowledge and wisdom to share and give back. Great investable teams emerge from this mix. And it's helping these investable people to start and grow companies that is the work of me and my team at the University of New South Wales. My team helps any UNSW student, staff member, or alumni to build the skills, mindset, and networks that they need to be successful entrepreneurs. We look to find people when they're first curious about entrepreneurship, if it's for them and what it involves. Then we support them as they go on the journey around finding an idea and forming an intent around what the business model might be until finally we help them start the new company. Uh, and ensure it's created in the right way so that it has the best start possible. That last piece of starting the company 
also includes UNSW investing financially in some of these companies. So we're not just supporting them with advice and connections, we're putting our money into these companies as well. Over the past three months, the UNSW entrepreneurship team has taken the exciting new companies that you'll see today through an intense acceleration process. We looked at over a hundred new potential startups that were emerging from the UNSW community to select just a handful to put through this program. And we've helped these companies over the past three months to find new customers, find new investors, and also help them to expand their teams with new employees and advisors. The most powerful asset of a university is its community. And it's the full power of this community that we've wrapped around the companies that you'll see today. And our work in this space of helping these new companies merge to commercialize research, it's not just the work of UNSW. We have key partners like the George Institute for Global Health. They're another research organization that understands new companies are a critical pathway for how world first scientific research is turned into products and services that benefit the community. And while UNSW has for generations improved the health outcomes of our community through world leading research and education, now we're with our partner, the George Institute for Global Health. We're supporting the companies who are bringing the next generation of affordable health innovation to the world. And that's why two of the companies you'll see in this showcase relate to the health sector. Research organizations taking a more active role in supporting the commercialization of research is a growing trend. And you are going to see this trend continue to grow because the main funder of scientific research, the Commonwealth government, is increasingly orientating its money in support of research that has a believable pathway to commercialization. When done well, this results in the formation of great new companies that can make for fantastic early stage investments. And the key recommendation I have for you as potential investors in these companies is to pay attention to the people, not just the technology. Sometimes investors get a little dazzled by the patents or the technology, but please focus on the people who hold the equity in the company. Commercializing research is building a business like any other, and it has this added piece of trying to craft a puzzle piece to connect into a market need. And that usually takes some trial and error before you get a great fit. So despite how good or impressive the underlying technology is, it's the people and their ability to be persistently responsive to the needs of the market and be wiggling that technology and that puzzle piece to find a fit that will determine the success or failure of the research commercialization process and if that company is going to be valuable or not. So as you consider any company that's commercializing research, my recommendation is you pay attention to the technology, but don't be dazzled by it. Like any early stage company, what you're investing in above all else is the people. Thank you for joining us today to see these exciting new companies. And if you're interested in knowing more about how UNSW is supporting new entrepreneurs, if you want to continue getting sneak peeks into the companies that we're creating, or you want to support us in our work, please contact me. Thank you again and enjoy the showcase. Our first presenting company today is 23 Strands. 23 Strands is a wholly owned early stage Australian company focused on delivering truly personalised healthcare. The team utilises artificial intelligence to unlock a patient's whole genome sequencing combined with medical records and a range of other contributing data to improve patient's outcome. Here to talk further about this is CEO and co-founder Mark Grosser. I 
Lab 23 strands, we've made it our mission to unlock the power of the human genome for clinical use and deliver on the promise of lifetime personalized medicine. Hello, my name is Mark Rosser, CEO and co-founder of 23 Strands. And I'd like to take this short presentation to introduce you to what we're doing to solve the hard problems in health with genomics. We've recently been developing relationships with some of the peak medical alliances in cardiovascular disease around Australia. And they've told us that over 30% of their patients have unexplained disease. And even today, over 40% of all of their patients are still having problems with their therapies. And this is an underserved target market in Australia and globally. Because around Australia, out of the 11 million patient presentations in the health system per year, we are looking at 3.1 million patients who have cardiovascular disease. And 930,000 of these have continuing issues with their treatment. We believe that about 10% or over 93,000 patients per year can afford a private service such as 23 strands diagnostics. And in our first year, we're being very conservative. We're only targeting 430 patients. Globally, this addressable market is nearly 10 times as large in our next target market, Asia. And cardiovascular disease is only the start. With human fertility, diabetes, respiratory, and other general health representing huge opportunities for growth. Our solution is unique and begins with a simple approach, similar to the banking sectors know your customer. And through this deep understanding of the patient through their electronic medical record, we map the patient into our big data set of de-identified medical records to build an understanding of what might happen to them over time. From there, we predict the improvements to therapy, diagnosis, and using pathologies and imaging, confirm with the patient's full 3 billion base pairs of DNA insights into their future. The treatments, their inheritable links, the other diseases and comorbidities and other treatments all can be delivered and insights gathered from their whole genome. And we do this through the insights out using artificial intelligence techniques from the universe of current scientific knowledge to, unexplain, uh, to, to explain why they're having problems with their therapies and why they might have gotten these diseases in the first place. And we have five main areas of IP that have already been developed to deliver this. And through this showcase, we've delivered integration with electronic medical records such as Best Practice and Genie, as well as our artificial intelligence risk scoring through our deep neural network models, our health path solution, as well as our artificial intelligence scientific journal article bibliometrics, and then finally, and most importantly, the clinical insights we can deliver both the doctors and their patients. And we've done this already for 21 patients, where we've taken them from blood extraction and DNA analysis and sequencing through to bioinformatics insights and analysis, and then delivery of the patient's information and the doctor's reports. And we've done this for our last seven patients at the peak of COVID-19 throughout May and June. And just the next video is just a quick introduction to our health path solution which just shows how COVID-19 demonstration patient can be given the ability to take control of their health through self-assessments, risk scoring, and then integration with our electronic medical record. And through this health path platform, we're able to quickly onboard the patient, screen them for, for other diseases, and then integrate their risk with other surveys such as mental health, clinical surveys, as well as imaging, diagnostic imaging, ECGs, and their electronic medical record integration. And we've looked at the global competition and we've seen no one else in the market doing what we can do through the whole human genome sequencing and reporting the health pathway and whole personalized precision and, and lifetime medicine, as well as the electronic medical record integration and artificial intelligence insights. And we're doing this with increased support from our global partners, giving us the ability to execute like nothing else, such as Oracle and AGRF. 
And we've got a fantastic team of data scientists, data engineers, and clinical experts, such as Professor Stephen Boyage and Professor Dion Venter within our team. And both of these professors were at the very beginning of Australian genomics. And the experts and professors that we're talking with have told us how important it is to rely on the science to justify the clinical translation. And we're very excited to be able to announce our first journal article has been accepted on AI approach in journal and bibliometrics in a prestigious global journal of computer science, as well as a clinical validation study looking at inflammation and immune system pathways for COVID-19 and their links with the cardiovascular system. And we're already building a market leader. Our roadmap here shows some of the small but large impacts we've had over the last 18 months, as well as our future plans for commercializing this technology and delivering solutions for both the doctors and patients. We aim to go to market within 12 months. And we've had some major wins. Our computer infrastructure and analysis platforms, as I mentioned, are already operational. And our partnership with UNSW and the George Institute through the Health 10X and Founders programs have brought new and significant research agreements and partnerships. And our first clinical referrals are starting to come in even without us having launched the business. And COVID-19 has not slowed our progress. Today, we're asking for $2 million on a pre-money valuation of $10 million. And we're aiming to use this to commercialize the products and the business. And we're mainly focused on converting our contractors into full-time staff, as well as delivering the whole genomics as planned. And we've got a very clear return strategy between within 18 to 24 months of either a global raise, dividends, or an IPO. Plus, we would also consider uh, joint ventures or corporate venture capital with large major healthcare companies, both locally and globally. And in our first three years, we've completed our year one. We expect to turn this into a large profit. And we're expecting that profit to be delivered within the next 18 months. We would really love your support. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to reach out and contact us, please see the details on the slide. Thank you very much for your time. Our next presenting company today is Movi. Movi is developing an integrated disinfection system which includes the trial-ready mobile germicidal light device and disinfection detection sensor called Movi Lights and Movi Sense. Here to dive deeper into this opportunity is Director Murray McDonald. Hi, I'm Murray and welcome to Movie. We're a medical technology company. The problem we're solving is healthcare acquired infections globally. Not a lot has changed since Florence Nightingale's days in the 1800s, when nursing staff manually cleaned and scrubbed down the wards to reduce infections for the soldiers. At Movie, we think it's time to change for new humanless disinfecting that's chemical free and data driven technology to disrupt the healthcare infection control market. Let me give you a quick overview, executive summary, looking at our team, our strategy and our future plans. Movie is spun out from Duplex Healthcare, our family company that's a healthcare equipment importer out of Europe that has built a sales distribution network and we've had over 20 years experience in the healthcare with healthcare clients nationally, and we bring new technologies to market. This is where we saw the unmet need. At Movie, we've been investing and in building a business and the foundations to a good business. We launched in January this year and have had early customers and sales of our technology. We have a high margin business, low cold business. The global disinfection market is $16 billion. The surface disinfection market is very active, amounting to over $34 billion. This 
business is in excess of a $200 million business opportunity. At Movie, we are developing an industry first with a big data IoT infection prevention platform with an international patent pending for our data platform. Clinical research trials have commenced in several Australian ICUs and international ICU trials are planned and other healthcare facilities with key opinion leaders to gain clinical evidence that will assist in driving our sales growth. We are building an international business with a sales marketing distribution network and international strategic partners. Our team was selected and completed the recent and fantastic 20 week UNSW Founders Health 10X program with the George Institute for Global Health. Among that is many uh, mentors locally as well as global healthcare uh, ne mentor network. We have invested and bootstrapped in Movie, and now it's time to grow 10X and accelerate. Movie's raising capital up to $2 million. If you're interested to learn more, please contact us or via the CRISP platform. We focused on creating a great team. Our team is at the heart of Movie and the implementation of Movie strategy. Our team spans biomedical, behavioral science, MBA, business analysts, electronic engineering, microbiology and sales, digital marketing and communication, and experienced in introducing three new technologies into the Australian, European and healthcare network, uh, healthcare market. Let's have a closer look at what movie is all about. Every second, a vulnerable patient is infected. Every three minutes, a vulnerable patient dies from a healthcare acquired infection. That's one in 10 patients infected. So what happens if you're patient number 10? According to World Health Organization, 700,000 deaths a year from infections occur. These are preventable. The infection burden to the international healthcare system is $60 billion in lost bed days every year. Human cleaning error is the main cause of contaminated surfaces and healthcare acquired infections. Cleaners, nurses, orderlies rely on old manual practices of wiping down equipment and surfaces. No one knows what's actually been cleaned or contaminated. Hi, I'm Murray McDonald, the founder of Movie. Meet Movie. The first of our two products is a clinically proven UV germicidal light technology that kills superbugs and disinfects highly touched surfaces and mobile medical equipment. Movie light can be used to rapidly disinfect between patients or after a hospital room discharge Remotely switch on Movie, and as little as 10 minutes, the environment is disinfected. What makes Movie unique is our patent pending Movie sensor that digitally validates when rooms and equipment are disinfected and alerts when forgotten. It's a tiny wireless disinfection tracking sensor that attaches to portable medical equipment, ventilator, a wheelchair, the wall of a patient room. Our primary competitors are old chemicals and human cleaning. What makes Movie money? Movie makes money via a pay-per-use hardware as a service. Just a few bucks per disinfection and the sensor platform. Movie's faster, cheaper and globally scalable. Our primary long-term market is high-risk infection wards with vulnerable patients, ICUs, theatre, dialysis, oncology. The global disinfection market is very active. In February, four Wuhan hospitals purchased a large quantity of our technology. Movies selling to customers in Australia, the faster decision-making sectors in the dental, medical and aged care. With over 32,000 hospitals in OECD, we are focused on Europe and Scandinavia first. In Australia, we're undertaking trials at Royal Melbourne Hospital ICU, COVID-19 trials underway at UNSW. Movies growing into Scandinavia, with distribution discussions commence, we've planned ICU trials in Germany. Our brilliant international diverse team that's taking movie global. We are agile, gritty, passionate, highly experienced advisors. Movie is now raising capital. Come and talk to us. Join us at Movie as we save lives and shine a bright light on superbugs and contaminated surfaces and help high-risk vulnerable patients globally. I hope that gave you an insight 
into Moody. The global infection market, with over 30,000 hospitals in OECDs and millions of mobile medical equipment for our disinfection sensor and big data platform. The infection market for Movi also is not just hospitals. It goes into the dentist or dental market, the biotech clean room space, medical clinics, even animal health. It's a vast market for us to address. Very quick high level on our financials, but we have in-depth financials that are available. We generate revenue with our subscription model, a HAS, just a few dollars per day. With deployment of over 7,000 units, our forecast gross revenue is $13 million within five years. So at 2025, we have plans to grow movie and then either a trade sale or IPO at five to seven years. Our collaboration partners are extensive with international and Australian partnerships in place. Also, Movie has had international awards. We are now raising up to $2 million to build the first in world infection prevention data platform and humanless disinfection system. Our funding over the next 18 months will be used to build a sales marketing team distribution channel across Europe and Australia, as well as conducting and continuing our clinical trial work in key hospitals, healthcare in, in Australia, as well as internationally. Ongoing development of our big data IoT sensor platform, also completing regulatory and product compliance work. At Movie, we know the problem. We have a solution. We have an experienced team, intellectual property is in place. We're growing customers. International clinical trial research is in place. And now we're seeking capital to grow. Feel free to connect with us at Movie via the Chris platform. We look forward to talking with you. Grow with us at Movie, save lives as we shine a bright light on superbugs and reduce the one in 10 infections and help high risk vulnerable patients globally. Next to present today is Contactile. Contactile is giving robots a human sense of touch. The patent soft tactile sensor array is as sensitive as human skin. The ability to measure a wide range of tactile parameters is what makes human touch so powerful and what gives Contactile a competitive advantage over all other tactile sensors in the market. Here to talk further about the opportunity is CEO Hebar Kamis. The human hand is a tool that's unrivaled in its sophistication and versatility for interacting with the physical world. Our hands are gentle enough to pick a raspberry without squashing it, or hold an egg without breaking or dropping it but our hands can be quite powerful and we can operate heavy tools such as an ax. We do all this with high precision and control and we can easily move from one manipulation task to another. But if you've ever tried to tie your shoelaces when your fingers are numb from the cold, you'll realize that it's our sense of touch that enables our extraordinary dexterity. And without it, our hands are clumsy instruments. We use our hands extensively in every industry to perform dull, dirty and dangerous jobs. In many of these industries, robotics are already in use to improve worker safety and performance. But these robotics can only perform limited actions within carefully designed environments. We're facing a global workforce crisis and the current pandemic is making things worse. This is accelerating our need for general purpose dexterous robots that can assist human workers in the real world. But for robots to become truly useful, they require a number of sensation, actuation, and intelligence capabilities to enable them to physically interact with the world around them. There are key players in each of these capability areas, except for touch sensing. Our inability to replicate the human sense of touch is one of the main reasons there's a market gap in gripping technologies that can generalize across many manipulation tasks. Tactile sensing is the final frontier for solving robotic dexterity. 
at Contactile, we're giving robots a human sense of touch. Our patented tactile sensors are as sensitive as human skin, and they can measure all of the tactile parameters that make human touch so powerful. Our sensors are enabling robots to use their hands just like we do. Other grippers can only apply pre-programmed forces and they can't adapt on the fly. Our sensors are autonomously detecting the optimal grip force for each of these objects and the gripper is responding dynamically, just like a human hand. You can see that even if the weight of the object changes, the sensors allow the gripper to adjust the grip, just like we do. Our sensors not only measure how hard the gripper is gripping, but more importantly, how hard the gripper needs to be gripping. Our founding team are the inventors of the tactile sensing technology. Our technical expertise spans electrical and software engineering, and we have extensive R&D experience, as well as experience securing funding and managing large projects. We've put six years of R&D into our patented technology. We're using all our smarts and experience to bring about a tactile revolution in robotics. We have support from a number of mentors from startup accelerator programs, and we're looking for advisors that can complement our skills. There are some tactile sensors, pressure sensor arrays, and force torque sensors in the competitive landscape, but none of these can measure all of the tactile properties that are important for gripping and dexterity that our sensors can measure. Other sensors only sense a subset of these properties and no other sensor can measure friction. There are also alternative gripping technologies, but none of these solutions can grasp an object securely with the optimal grip force without pre-programming or customization, making their use quite limited. The robotic end effector market is growing to a massive $6 billion by 2025, but we're unlocking new applications for which robots have never been used in the past. So our total addressable market is even bigger than this. We'll sell our sensors directly to the thousands of researchers that are developing the next generation of robotic technologies. We've already sold our six and a half thousand dollar development kits to a number of these early adopters, including to Queensland University of Technology, Rice University in the US, University College Dublin in Ireland, Sigma Claremont and Ecole Centrale de Lyon in France, and Toyota Research Institute in the US. We'll also sell our sensors to the thousands of robotics integrators that are developing bespoke automation solutions for their customers. We've received positive feedback from a number of these integrators and we'll be doing a product evaluation with a highly innovative integrator in 2021. Finally, we'll form channel partnerships with other robotics manufacturers so that we can penetrate the global robotics value chain. We've already performed a product evaluation with the world leading shadow robot company and they're offering our sensors as an add on to improve their product. We're also currently engaging in a project with Tasker Prosthetics from New Zealand to integrate our sensors into their world leading prosthetic hand. This three pronged approach gives us enormous reach into almost every conceivable application of robotic gripping, including in the natural resources sector for autonomous servicing, such as opening valves to release pressure in a gas pipeline, in agriculture for harvesting and packing produce, in advanced manufacturing for handling parts and performing complex assembly tasks without the need for custom tooling, in warehousing and e-commerce fulfillment, for example, picking uh, grocery orders or orders of other fast moving consumer goods, in prosthetics so that a prosthetic hand user can feel what they're touching and know that they're safely holding the object without needing to look at their hand. In surgical robotics to enable the surgeon to feel what they're doing and palpate tissue remotely rather than relying on vision and muscle memory. And even in space for autonomous robotic servicing of satellites in orbit and one day for building infrastructure on Mars. We're raising a seed round of $500,000 at a pre-money valuation of three and a half million. Our plan for the next few years is to continue to sell our sensors to the early adopters at research institutions so that our sensors become embedded in new robotics technologies. A primary focus will be to secure and execute a pilot project and we're already in discussions with an e-commerce automation supplier. We'll continue to perform R&D and product development 
to generate new IP and maintain our position as a leader in tactile sensing. We'll secure a channel partner and sales to robotics integrators and reach a break-even milestone at $500,000 revenue. If you'd like to be part of this tactile revolution in robotics, please click on the link below and join our deal room. We're can tactile and we're giving robots a human sense of touch. Thank you. Our next presenter today is Bandicoot, a Sydney-based startup created by four ex-employees of Canon's Australian Research Facility. The team has developed a new technology for the online fashion industry, ShimmerView, that can increase conversion rates and decrease returns by giving online shoppers a better sense of the fabric of the garment they are purchasing online. Here to discuss this opportunity further is CEO Dr. David Monaghan. Morgan, I'm the CEO of Bandicoot Imaging Sciences. and We're a Sydney-based startup that's changing the way that people will perceive fabrics and images online. So what's prompted us to do this? Well, let's face it, online shopping can be a bit hit and miss sometimes. You want to buy this t-shirt, but you're not really sure what it's going to look like when it arrives in the mail. Well, what if, if you clicked on that t-shirt, you saw something like this? Or well, what about that wallet you were thinking of? What if just by tilting your phone backwards and forwards a few times, it was as if you were holding it in your hand? What you're seeing here is a Bandicoot Shimmer View. Now, it's a whole new way of experiencing materials and fabrics online. So why did we invent Shimmer View? Simple, to help online retailers increase customer confidence in their purchases and to reduce returns. Because the simple fact is, one in three fashion items bought online is returned. And it's a quarter of those are returned because they just didn't look right when they arrived in the mail. And the key reason for this is because fabrics and materials are more than just simply colours on a screen. It's in the shininess, it's in the silkiness, it's in the way it feels when you hold it in your hand, the way the light plays across it. So in this era of high definition, high resolution displays that are everywhere, can we convey this in a digital image? And the answer is yes, through a process called material capture. So why isn't the online fashion industry doing this already? Well, currently it needs specialist equipment and it's expensive and often you've got to send your materials out to be scanned. And that's just not really cost effective in an industry where the margins are already thin and the products need to be on the website in the same day. So Bandicoot started with what every online fashion retailer already has a camera with a flash. And using this, an online retailer can simply take a series of photos of their fabric at different angles and upload them to our service where we do our magic, which in reality actually turns out to be very accurate image alignment technology. On the left here, you can see that series of photos that the retailer snapped at different angles. But on the right are those same photos where we've done sub-pixel alignment so that we can accurately model the material's behaviour under lighting at viewed at different angles. And then we put it all together. And a few minutes later, it can be up on a website. It's easy. Now we offer a cloud-based service coupled with a flexible business model that scales with our customers' needs. Try it out for no obligation, followed by a basic self-service per shimmer price scan that increases with the different options and levels of support. And for our enterprise customers, there's an option of custom models coupled with a priority service. We're targeting 20,000 shimmers a month by the end of 2022. And we've identified segments within the fashion industry that can benefit from shimmer view, such as affordable luxury and active wear. And given there are 500 million fashion items online at any given time, we've got plenty of room to grow. And as far as that market goes, well, we're targeting the e-commerce product teams and the marketing managers within those companies. But there's other service providers, such as the product photographers themselves. And as for the sales channels that we need to support, well, there are the traditional website that the large majors tend to prefer, but more increasingly, they're turning to their own apps. So we'll support that as well. And then there's a whole range of sales platforms, such as Shopify, that we'll support, 
along with social media, which in and in, in of itself is becoming a sales platform. And to help us better understand that market, we've been collaborating with both local and global companies to better understand our opportunities and to validate and refine our technology. And as these trials end, we're working towards converting these collaborators into customers. And most important of all is the team. We've known each other for over 15 years, previously working at Canon, which is a research facility in Australia. Our CTO, Matthew, has an incredibly broad knowledge of the technologies required and how they fit together. And Peter, he's responsible for the breakthrough technologies that make this all possible. And David's ability to take those algorithms and turn them into software is nothing short of phenomenal. And I just do everything I can to keep the show running. So today, we're targeting $2.5 million revenue by the end of 2023. And this is underpinned by a world-class technical team of highly experienced people who are able to develop and secure novel IP. And we have excellent prospects for acquisitions by companies in more traditional areas of material capture. We have the potential to branch into other market spaces and we're primed for growth. So in summary, we're looking for a seed round to follow on from our previous angel round. Our ask being $1.5 million Australian in return for around a 20% interest in our company. And we're also looking for business advice and any warm introductions into the industry. And just a little bit more about those last two points. We are going to create a full mobile phone app for simplified scanning of items, along with a seamless integration into Shopify. We also want to do tiling and stitching of the materials to support the ever expanding 3D digitization of the whole fashion design workflow. And to back that up, we're gonna have a full 3D material capture just using a mobile phone. And there are so many other markets for us to expand into, such as gaming and visual effects who have an insatiable need for digital assets. And then there's architecture to create walkthrough for new buildings. And there's arts for the online styles of paintings and sculpture. And finally, home furniture. We're Bandicoon Imaging Sciences, and we're transforming online retail with Shimmer View. Next to present today is Block 42. Block 42 specialises in media technology. Using gamification features and cloud service, Block 42 has developed an easy to use, collaborative and cost effective 3D engine to democratise 3D designs. Here to talk about this venture further is CEO Charlene Hugh. co-founder of Block42. Today we're going to introduce you this exciting 3D creation platform for everyone. We're building this collaborative cost-effective 3D platform for everyone and enterprise and we aim to make 3D creation fun accessible for everyone. First let's talk about the industry first. There it's it's tend to be really costly for companies to create 3D. They either uh, subscribe to their professional 3D software or try to hire professional 3D designers uh, when it comes to 3D design. It usually costs thousands of dollars or months, uh, even just for one simple prototype. There has to be something that is so simple so everyone can use to create 3D. That's where Block42 comes in. Even we aim to have even a year seven old child can create 3D in 15 minutes learning and deliver a five minutes 3D visualization video in 15 minutes. We aim at this $300 billion 3D prototype and visualization market, starting with um, Australian market. This is our proposed pricing model. It's essentially a SaaS platform with three levels of subscriptions, free trial for limited features forever, $20 per user per month for full features and online tutorials, and also a customized package for teachers, school teachers um, and enterprises. So how does Block42 work? Uh, you simply download Block42 
42, have your own account, and then you start creating 3D uh, designs with anyone on the platform. And then you can share or sell your 3D creation within the platform or on any other platform. The beauty of Block 42 platform is that any user can create 3D on the same project in real time with any other person. Users can use Block 42 for smart city design or space simulation solutions in 3D. They can share their creation with global users and even 3D print them. Since um, June last year, we launched the platform. We have got 10 uh, schools subscribing Block 42 in Australia and Singapore. And this is the rapid growth we are currently having. Teachers are early adopters and here's what they are saying about us. So my name is Anne and I'm co-principal at Maria Regina at Avalon. We are a small Catholic school, I think we have 130 children, um, kindergarten to year six, beautiful school. I think uh, it, it actually blends a whole lot of learning for them. So it's a whole lot of maths and a whole lot of science, but it's also the excitement of designing something and seeing it come to life. Uh, and I know I saw them come back into the classroom and their faces were just aglow. They were very excited about what's to come. You know, like they, I think they can see that it'll develop over time. We are collaborating with Australian and Singaporean organisations and after school institutes, including Future Ready Academy and some Catholic schools. We also collaborate with arts colleges uh, like Animal Logic Academy, UTS, AITSA, e Retail mm -hmm. Education, uh, based in Australia, to make this very exciting platform um, and market it to the relevant customers. We have a team uh, with resilient co-founders who have diverse skills in business finance, product design, game development, and arts. We also have a, an advisory board with a wealth of a wealth of knowledge in the edge tech and multimedia tech space. So we are currently raising 800K to match um, 800K AC grant. Uh, these funds will be used for product development, uh, marketing, advertising sales, as well as some other office cost and legal expense. And with this money, we aim to achieve all our milestones in the next two years to get 200,000 users next year and to 20 million users by um, the end of 2022, which will bring us 30 million uh, revenue. If you want to get a return over 20x, invest in us to get a revolutionary 3D engine marketplace for 3D creation and partnership with influencers and distribution channels. Thank you for joining us for the 10X and Health 10X Showcase that we've been hosting in conjunction with the University of New South Wales and the George Institute. I hope you found the presentations exciting and I also hope you're already engaging with the companies that are presented. As mentioned, what makes this work and is basically the ecosystem. So not only is your opportunity to participate as an investor, but also the opportunity with these companies comes from the trade angle, from the uh, export exploration of opportunities with international markets as well and we encourage you to do that with the CEOs directly via the platform. Now the next step just to give a bit of an insight the next event we're going to be hosting we're actually hosting in conjunction with our, our good friends at the Capital Network and it's called the Emerging Small Cap Summit. This is going to be hosted on December 4th we look forward to you joining us because we're, we're going to be featuring a range of innovative uh, small caps. And as you probably know from our past videos, this has been an area in which we've seen incredible success stories where companies have gone on to become unicorns or gone on to become sort of quite significant companies when we've started working with them at the early stage. So once again, thank you for joining us for today. I hope you enjoyed the presentations and look forward to joining you at our next event.